there everybody Helen with you today um, welcome to the first part of our three part corner to corner series um, today just to get you started we're going to be looking at how to read a corner to corner pattern what's involved and um, just get you familiar with it so it doesn't look as intimidating and we're also going to master the corner to corner stitch so during the course of these three um, sessions we're actually going to be creating this gorgeous cushion um, so part one like I said we're looking at the instructions oh sorry it dropped and we're also going to master the corner corner stitch if you can see that so I'll be showing you how to do this that this is actually um, the back of one of those cushions my nieces have asked for a pink version so I'll be showing you how to work this um, and also reduce for a square when you do a square we're reducing at both sides at the same time um, so that's fine so we'll work, be working increases for the first half and reductions for the second half and then in part two we'll be looking at how to actually make the front of the pillow so this is where the picture section comes into it it's a really simple pattern um really cute but there's only the two colors so worst case i think is you've got five different colors going on one row like blue white blue white blue um or whatever colors you choose to use but don't worry about that because i'll take you through it in its entirety so part two will work actually the picture and i'll show you the basics and get you going on that and then in part three we're going to look at rectangles because usually when you make um afghans and that sort of thing they are rectangles rather than squares so i'll be showing you how to do a rectangle with corner to corner um not as difficult as what you might think but we'll get there when we get there in part three um, and during that section i haven't got it with me at the moment um, but i'll run through how to make a very simple corner corner scarf or infinity cowl that i made using some mandala yarn um, so shall we get started and start looking at the instructions and the pattern for a corner to corner so come and join me at my workstation and we'll go through this in more depth okay so here we have our crochet pattern now i do just need to put a photograph of the cushion when it comes back from the photographer on top of this one um but the pdf will have that included for you so that's page one page two you can see we have a list of materials now generally what a corner to corner pattern doesn't do is tell you how much yarn you need to make to make the the project now this is because of tension and also because there's a few ways of doing corner to corner so you could use um double crochet which is the traditional method and the one that i'm going to show you today um or you could use half double crochets and instead of chaining three you chain two um, but obviously that makes the project smaller so generally what happens is if you can see if I come in just a little bit here in the pattern note section it says to work out how much yarn you will need you will need to do a sample swatch and then measure how much yarn you used per corner to corner block multiplying that by the number of blocks of that color and adding some extra for the tails to be worked in at the end now what i usually do is just add half a skein um unless it's a big project and then i'll add a whole skein just to make sure that i've got enough um to accommodate the tails um so this is this pattern here also if i go up to my abbreviation section the only abbreviations in there that I have are the colours and the fasten off. So you can see as well um, that I have a rough gauge for this pattern. So um, to get a pillow that fits a 16 inch pillow form, the gauge swatch you'll get 2 by 2 inches is 3 blocks by 3 blocks. So this pattern is written in US terms. Um, 
when you work a corner to corner they are always reversible so you, when you carry the yarn remember you need to work over that but I'll show you that in video two um, you need to work over any yarn that you're carrying so that it doesn't um, you don't have loose ends and such on the back um, and the only other point to note is on this particular pattern I have noted that colour charts and stitch totals are listed under the picture graph on the next page um, if there is a larger graph that can be printed off it'll be provided as a sec second document so so just to quickly run through the materials you'll need um, number four weight yarn in two colours so I'm using Karen Simply Soft I use that for both the blue version and the version that I'm making the pink version with you guys um, and you'll require one skein of each colour five millimetre hook stitch markers I've put that the recommended because obviously you guys are new to corner corner um, just to make sure that you know where your first and your last stitch are um, scissors tapestry needle and a 16 inch pillow form to actually um, put inside the cushion when you're finished now the next page is where you have the graph so this is the graph of what we're making so you can see how just cute and adorable that bunny is there now when you work corner to corner the instructions um, are always written from the bottom right all the way up to the top left so you'll work generally speaking you'll work down for the first one then up for the second row down for the third row up for the fourth row now with a graph um, and the instructions there is a right side and a wrong side so the way the picture looks here that is the right side of your work but I'll, again I'll run through that with you in video two um, and show you how to make sure that you know exactly which side's which you can see as well we have our colour count here so in the background colour that you're using we have 330 stitches on the front the bunny colour which is purple on the graph but I did it white in um, my blue version and I'm going to be doing light pink in the pink version we have 199 squares so we know how many squares we've got so we can work out our gauge for our yarn requirements this section here shows you the written instructions sorry I'll just come in shows you the written instructions so you can see we have row numbers it tells us whether it's the right side or the wrong side now that will become important when we start reducing to kind of make that last corner and it tells you how many squares you should have on each row now corner to corner is quite rhythmical and that while you're increasing you always add one square for each row so you know a which row you're on and b whether you've done that row right so whilst you're learning um what i would recommend you do is do one row and double check that your square counts right if you don't have the right square count chances are um, you've just missed a stitch somewhere and this these arrows here sometimes they're on the end but you generally have some indication as to which way on the graph you're working so you can see there the arrow that points to the left we're actually working oh where are we there we are down when it points to the right we're working up so we're working down when it points left and we're working up the graph when it points right now as I mentioned in the introduction there are um, a couple of ways of writing the instructions for a corner to corner and I have supplied both both in the PDF and on the blog post because this is um, an educational video as well so I did want to supply both for you um, basically 
these are the written instructions so it physically writes out colour A and how many squares you do and then when you come to do multiple colours it'll say colour A how many squares colour B how many squares and then we're back to colour A and it'll tell us how many squares we've got at the end with our colour block instructions they are pretty much the same except they're more of a visual rep representation so that was row 9 I just went through with you so if we look at row 9 on this one you can see we've still got the arrow if I come in we've still got the arrow that tells us which way we're working on the graph whether we're going up and to the right or down and to the left and it tells us the row number and whether we're right side or wrong side then this is where the colour block comes in so we have three white squares four purple squares and two white squares so that makes our row so instead of it being represented as colour A for three colour B for four colour A for two it's just more of a visual now sometimes people do prefer this because there is more of a visual um, for you but it is more ink um, you might find that some designers when they put their patterns up they'll only include one or the other type of um, instruction very few of them will include all um, but it's obviously if you have a preference it's always good to check which instruction method they are giving you or whether they're giving you both corner sometimes it'll say corner somewhere in the instructions and it'll do that both in the written and if I turn it over it'll do it oh there we are in the colour block now on this particular one you can see I have used two different methods just to show you the difference for the purposes of this video so corner and reduce from the left and the right here are the same thing so that tells you where you reach the corner and then you have to start reducing in order to make the square we will get to that honestly it's not as bad as it sounds but I just wanted to point out that this is where our corners are so if it tells you to reduce from one side or the other or both or if it just says corner then you need to be looking at the graph double checking which way is the right way on your work and getting it clear in your head that that's where the corner goes and that is pretty much all there is to a corner corner pattern that I think I need to go through with you and um, you can see here we've just got lots of white columns basically that's just 15 white squares um, and on our PDF version I do include instructions on how to put the pillow together the photographs are for our B pillow but it's put together exactly the same so I've just included those in the PDF for those who haven't put together a pillow before and then finally we just have all of our links Sarah and I like to put that in all of our patterns you will find it somewhere occasionally it's at the beginning but more often than not it's right at the end and it's just different places that you can find us so for instance if you've got one of our problems and you're having a little bit of an issue you could always um, join our Facebook group and say hey I'm working on this pattern I'm stuck on this row can somebody please give me a hand if Sarah and I aren't around which to be fair is very unusual um, we have some lovely moderators and there's some fabulous people in the group that will also um, come and help you out so let's get started with our um, corner to corner back and start mastering this stitch okay so for this one I'm actually going to use Karen Simply Soft my nieces have requested that I make them a pink version so I'm going to do the back of the pillow and the background in the darker pink 
and I'm going to have a light pink bunny with a little white tail. So we won't need this pink until video two. So for the rest of this video I'm going to run through with you how we make the corner to corner stitch. So for the purposes of this video, the rest of this video, we're going to work a plain back for the cushion. So what this is going to do is just make you the pro at the stitch before we even consider bringing in bobbins and um, changing colours and all that malarkey. So we need to get a slip stitch under our hook as we would ordinarily and we need to chain three. Once you've changed your three, what you need to do is just nip that third one so you know which one it is. Basically, you're just using it to mark which one the third one is, and then you'll chain another three. Then in that stitch that you've got a hold of, we're going to double crochet, and then we'll double crochet into the next chain. and double crochet into that last chain. So that's our first square made, our first block. Um, now when you're following the pattern, each one of these equates to one square. So that's what one square represents. Your chain three and your three double crochets. But because we're doing the back, we don't need to worry about um, the bunny rabbit colours at the moment. So then we'll turn our work and we'll chain three again. We do this on the first stitch of every row. We'll nip that chain three, that third chain, sorry, and we'll chain another three. Then we'll do a double crochet into that stitch that we've nipped and a double crochet into each of the next two. So then what we need to do is anchor this block that we've just made to the first block. So you've got your three double crochets there and then your chain three on the end because we've turned it remember. So we're going to insert our hook into that chain three space and literally slip stitch. Now as you can see that anchors it quite nicely that block isn't moving anywhere. So then we need to chain three and then do three double crochets into that same chain three space. And then we turn our work. And because this is the first stitch of the row, the first block of the row, we're going to chain three, put our finger and nip that third loop so we know which one it is, and then chain another three. Then we're going to double crochet into that stitch that we've nipped, and we'll double crochet into each of the following chains. And then we need to anchor this stitch. So we're going to look for that chain three space from the previous row and slip stitch into it so that we're anchoring that block. Then we'll chain three and do three double crochets into that chain three space. And then we need to anchor this block to the next block. So we look for that chain three space and we'll slip stitch onto it. Then we'll chain three and do three double crochets. Now you can see for row three, we have three blocks. For row two, 
we had two blocks and for row one we had one block. So that's how we know we're doing it right and it's also a good measure um, to keep track of what row you're on until you start reducing. So this is row three. We need to turn our work and for the first stitch of the row we need to chain three, nip that third one and then chain three. Then we'll double crochet into the stitch that we nipped and we'll do a double crochet into the next chain and a double crochet into that last chain. And then we're going to anchor it into the next chain three space. So you can see we've got quite a nice right angle there going on and when we anchor it, if I just take that slip stitch out, so we've just worked this one, this is the third stitch from the previous row so when we anchor it that stitch is going nowhere. So if I just redo that slip stitch. Um, so. I just want to make sure as well that you guys can see where that chain three is. It's always on the end. So you, when, as you look at your work from the row below, you'll have three double crochets and then your chain three. We always work into this chain three space. We're not working into any double crochets, only the chain three space. So that's on the end of each of those steps or blocks. So, remember it's only the first block that starts slightly differently. After that we just chain three and work three double crochets into that chain three space. And then we'll anchor it to the next chain three space. And we'll chain three and we'll do three double crochets in that same three chain, sorry, that same chain three space. And then we'll anchor it to that last stitch, that last chain three with a slip stitch, chain three and then three double crochets. Oops. And then that was the last stitch of row four that you can see there. So then we'll turn our work. So this is the last row I'll go through with you. So we're turning our work and we're going to chain three because this is the first stitch of the row. We're going to nip that third stitch and we're going to chain another three. Then we're going to work a double crochet into that third stitch that we nipped and a double crochet into each of the next two chains. And then we're going to anchor by slip stitching into the next chain three space. And chain three and then three double crochets. And then slip stitch into the next chain three space. Chain three. And then three double crochets. And then we'll slip stitch into the next chain three space and we'll chain three, three double crochets and then we'll anchor it to the next chain three space with a slip stitch 
and chain three and three double crochets and that finishes off that row. Now I want you to repeat that process until you have 23 rows completed. And now remember you'll know you have 23 rows completed because you'll have 23 steps up your work. So remember the first stitch of the row, chain three, nip that third stitch, chain another three and then put a double crochet in the stitch that you nipped and a double crochet in each of the next two chains along. Then you're going to anchor it to the next chain three space that you have available and then you're going to chain three and do three double crochets in that same chain space. And then we'll anchor it to the next one, chain three, three double crochets, anchor it to the next chain three space and we'll work that way all the way down until you have 23 rows and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so you can see here I've got my 23 rows of the back of this pillow and the reason I know that is because I have 23 bumps. Now if you've counted your rows um, going up and you've got 23 rows but less than 23 of these steps, it means that somewhere along the line what you've done is you've probably... Um, anchored one of your stitches and then forgot you need to make a stitch so you need to go back and have a little bit of a look and see if you can work out where that happened um okay so i've got 23 steps shall we just check that we've got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 so now I can start reducing so that we get the corner coming in at the other side. Now this actually isn't going to be as complicated as what you think it might be. If you just let me zoom in a bit, we'll get started. So you're a pro increasing now in order to decrease this first step here we need to slip stitch all the way up to um, that chain three space. So I'll just slip stitch into that. And then instead of doing the chain six, we simply chain three and work our three double crochets into that chain three space. You being nosy, Hugo? Sorry for the pitter patter, and that's my dog. Um, so then we need to anchor this, this stitch here, to the next block. So we're going to slip stitch into the next chain three space just to anchor that. Chain three, and then three double crochets into that chain three space. And we're going to do that all the way along the row. So we're not doing the start in the row with a chain six anymore because we're not increasing. Instead, when we decrease, we're just going to slip stitch up those first stitches on the side that we're decreasing. But because we're doing a square, we are decreasing on both sides. So when I get to the end of this row, I'll show you what we do there. Okay, so I'm on to the last stitch of row 24. So I'm going to anchor that. I'm going to do my chain three and my three double crochets as we would ordinarily. When we're increasing, 
we would ordinarily anchor to this very last chain three space here and work our last block to continue to grow that side but we're reducing on this side we're reducing on both sides so we're literally just going to do our slip stitch to anchor it we're going to turn our work and then we're going to slip stitch up the side to that chain three space like we did at the other end and then that creates the second corner and then we'll chain three three double crochets in the neck in the same chain three space sorry and then we'll anchor that block to the next chain three space with a slip stitch chain three and three double crochets in that ch same chain three space now we're going to do that for every row so it'll get smaller and smaller and that last corner will start coming in for you um, I'll meet you back when I've got three stitches left so the last two rows see you soon okay so as you can see um, I've slip stitched up the side for the first stitch of every row working up and I'm getting to that nice corner point now and um, just a couple more rows to go so I'll do the last stitch in this row I find quite um, decreasing quite therapeutic because you'll notice that when you're increasing your stitch count matches your rows but when you decrease actually the number of stitches you do tells you um, how many rows you've got left so you know as they get shorter and shorter you're getting closer and closer to the end right so I'm starting my next row and I'm slip stitching sorry I should have showed you that there we go I'm going to slip stitch up that first block all the way up to the chain three space at the top there we go and then I'll chain three and three double crochets in that same chain three space and then we'll anchor this stitch to the next one with a slip stitch chain three and three double crochets and then that's the last stitch of the row so then we're going to anchor that with the slip stitch turn our work and you'll notice that we've only got one stitch to make on this row so we're going to slip stitch up the side of the um, set that we've just made chain three and three double crochets in that same chain three space and then we'll anchor it to that top stitch and you can see that has created the corner for us so then if I just grab my scissors we can snip the yarn and fasten off and that creates, if I 
come out a little bit more for you the back of our cushion So this should be just a little bit shorter than um, 16 inches. You can sew in the ends at this point if you would like to um, and it just keeps it tidy. So that's it for the back of the pillow. So if you join me in the next video I'll be showing you how to actually create the bunny rabbit um, and use your pattern in order to um, make this so this one's going to be simple um, it's literally two colors there's not a lot of bobbins or um, balls of yarn all attached to your work at the same time that you need so it is a good one for a start off but it will show you all the basics um, if you would like to add a pom-pom tail by all means feel free this is your pillow after all um, so yes so that's coming up in video two if you have enjoyed what you've learnt so far it would be really great if you could subscribe to our channel and um, hit the little bell icon and that will allow you to be notified every time we update um, our channel with a new video um, basically this year we'll be having quite a few updates and um, so there will be a lot uh, going on here this year and we'll hope to see you soon bye